More details come in on Tesla's potential privatization. A pair of Model 3s have forgot something on the road. Destination chargers may soon have ratings and a small piece of errata. This is Tesla Tibbets, episode number 436 for August 14th, 2018. Today's episode once again starts at the Tesla blog, where Elon has clarified some of the details around his proposal to remove Tesla from the stock market and make it a private company once again. In the post, Elon says that on August 2nd, in his personal capacity, rather than as his capacity as a CEO or chairman of the board, he notified the board of his wish to take Tesla private at $420 per share. The board's outside directors, minus Elon and his brother Kimball Musk, discussed the proposal, and eventually a full board meeting was held to discuss the merits of the proposal. It was agreed that the next step would be to reach out to some of Tesla's largest shareholders regarding the idea, but for obvious reasons, Elon couldn't just talk to the largest shareholders, as this would be a blatant SEC violation regarding the dissemination of material information. So Elon tweeted out the thought, which was followed by an official Tesla blog post. At that point, with everyone and their brother duly notified, discussions could begin with the aforementioned shareholders. Elon's comment about the funding for such a possibly massive buyout being secured was due in part to the fact that the the Saudi Arabian Sovereign Wealth Fund had previously approached Tesla about this topic and had also recently acquired a roughly 5% stake in the company on the open market. The Saudis had reached out to Elon on July 31st, expressing disappointment that he'd not taken them up on their offer before. However, the representative made it clear that they were still interested in the idea. Elon then addresses the question of the cost of the operation, saying, quote, Reports that more than $70 billion would be needed to take Tesla private dramatically overstate the actual capital raise needed. The $420 buyout price would only be used for Tesla shareholders who do not remain with our company if it is private. My best estimate right now is that approximately two-thirds of shares owned by all current investors would roll over into a private Tesla, end quote. So, essentially, Elon is expecting everyone but the shorts to remain in the company as investors. Lastly, Elon again details the logistics of the operation. Quote, If and when a final proposal is presented, an appropriate evaluation process will be undertaken by a special committee of Tesla's board, which I understand is already in the process of being set up, together with the legal counsel it has selected. If the board process results in an approved plan, any required regulatory approvals will need to be obtained and the plan will be presented to Tesla shareholders for a vote, end quote. We go over to Electrek next for a peculiar story where Model 3 rear bumpers have fallen off a pair of cars. While this is certainly an extremely strange occurrence, it's also extremely rare, as these two cars are the only known victims of the defect. Ritesh Nair, one of the two unfortunate folks to lose their bumper, was quoted as saying, quote, Half an hour after bringing Model 3 home, run into heavy rain on the streets, and the bumper comes off, end quote. Ritesh found support on Twitter from at BenJ1Franks, who had the same thing happen. Tesla is investigating the issue, saying, quote, We're setting an extremely high bar for Model 3, and what happened in this situation is not how we build our cars. We're investigating the issue to understand what caused it, and we are contacting our customers to resolve this and ensure they are satisfied, end quote. Two cars does not make an epidemic, but still would be nice to see what's causing the issue. Next up, we're back to Elon for a bit of Twitter news. Twitter user at Josh1C asked Elon, quote, Hey, at Elon Musk, it would be great if owners could rate, comment, suggest updates for destination chargers through the nav. I've had varying experience at destination chargers and would like the ones that are excelling to be noticed, end quote. Elon responded saying, quote, Good idea. We will add this feature, end quote. So there's a great new feature to allow for ratings on charging equipment, much as PlugShare already does, just this will be built into the car's feature set. Lastly, errata from the previous show. I had mistakenly, due to my ignorance and oversight, reported Auckland as a site in Australia. YouTube user Dogflap helpfully pointed out that Auckland is in New Zealand, not Australia. Apologies to my Australian and New Zealand listeners for the air. Check out the links to the full stories in the show description. Also, please consider supporting the show financially through Patreon at patreon.com slash tidbits. Thanks, as always, to our super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. 
They are John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, John Waller, Mark and Sarah Thomas, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dory and Steve Guberman, Bruno Kundici, Joey Boots, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Adam Raymer Brown, Megawatt Photovoltaic Development, Todd Sullivan, Robert Healy, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Ogg, Blake Thompson, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Michael Pastroni, and Travis and Cheyenne Rush. If you're looking to purchase a Model S, Model X, or Model 3 Performance, you can enjoy free supercharging for the life of the vehicle and hook me up with some Tesla swag if you use the referral link ts.la slash jim50888 to purchase your vehicle. If you can't support with dollars, feel free to leave a positive review for the show instead. If you have feedback for me, as always, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. I'll see everyone back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.